Do you need to know which MacBook Pro to buy? Well, it depends on what you plan to do with the laptop. The two models have some very specific differences that could make one more suitable than the other. Depending on your needs, it seems to me that those differences are often not talked about. But keep watching because I will explain the differences you did not know about for these two MacBooks. The M2 MacBook Pro might actually come next month, depending on whether the rumors are true or not. But assuming they are, I don't think we will see many major differences, especially when it comes to the design and also the features. We can get some predictable performance boost. I will make a separate video explaining what to expect from the M2 Pro. But most of what I will say in this comparison I think will apply to them too. So I've been using both the MacBook Pro 14 and 16 for more than eight months. And after testing them in real life scenarios, I've come to some conclusions that I wanna share with you in this comparison video. And to make this comparison fair, we will use a point-based system to see who will win at the end. Design and connectivity. Both the 14 and the 16 MacBook Pro feature the same design and colors. They come in silver or space gray colors, both of which look sleek and modern. The main difference between the two are of course weight and size. The MacBook Pro 16 being 1.2 pounds heavier than the 14 and having 30% more volume. So it's no surprise then that the MacBook Pro 14 is more portable of the two. It's thinner, smaller and lighter. In fact, it doesn't weigh much more than the previous MacBook Pro 13 and is generally impressively compact for the amount of power it packs. I found it to be the perfect size for using on the go. Connectivity options are the same on each device with a welcome variety of ports. We got three Thunderbolt 4 ports or USB 4 ports, also supporting DisplayPort, one HDMI port, an SDX card reader, and a headphone jack. We also got MagSafe charging for both, with MagSafe 3 being only on the MacBook Pro 16 if it comes with the M1 Mac. Both displays have mini LED screens, but they don't have the same size or resolution. The new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro have a display resolution of 3024 by 1964 and 3456 by 2234 respectively. The aspect ratio is identical at 1610. As far as refresh rate go, there are no differences between the new MacBook Pros. ProMotion technology is in use here, meaning that the refresh rate is adapted to what you are currently doing. At the lowest level, you can expect a refresh rate of 24 Hertz but it can go all the way up to a respectable 120 Hz when necessary. This design choice will help preserve battery life while still allowing for smooth performance during gameplay and also creative workflows. Screen to body ratio are a bit different with the 16 having 91%, while the 14 having 89%. This might not sound big on paper, but in person and especially with the notch, the 16 inch display look more bezel-less than the 14. Anyone who values a larger screen will be tempted to go for the 16 inch. This size of the screen will be more comfortable for things like image editing, graphic design, and even coding. Both the 14 and 16 inch feature a six speaker setup. Due to the size of the chassis, the speaker enclosure is slightly larger on the 16 inch than of course the 14 inch. To my ears, the 16 inch has slightly more bassier sound than the 14 inch. Proof that you cannot cheat physics. It is a small difference, but if you want the absolute best speaker system on your MacBook Pro, you'll have to go for the 16 inch model. Both the 14 inch and the 16 inch models are equally upgradable to the M1 Mac with 10 core CPU and 32 core GPU. But if you're looking to spend as little as possible or do not need extra performance, it is worth noting the difference between the chips of the base configuration. The base configuration of the 14 inch MacBook Pro features an M1 Pro with eight core CPU and 14 core GPU. While the base 16 inch 
contains M1 Pro with 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU. These are actually the two configurations I use in my test with the 14 inch having 16 gigabit of RAM and the 16 inch having 32 gigabit of RAM. Now, the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max offers a software feature called high power mode. When enabled, high power mode boosts the performance of the machine for intensive sustained workload. High performance mode is designed to optimize performance to better support resource intensive tasks such as color grading 8K ProRes video. The better and bigger thermals on the larger 16 inch definitely helps. But the 14 inch MacBook Pro does not feature high power mode. So if you want the ability to selectively push the M1 Max chip to its limit, then you will need to buy the 16 inch model. In day-to-day -day tasks like using multiple Chrome tabs, watching video, or even listening to music on Spotify, you know, the regular stuff, I didn't see any real performance difference. Now let's talk about benchmarks. While benchmarking the CPU of both machines or Cinebench R23, the 16 inch with the M1 Pro 10 cores got 12,390, while the 14 inch with M1 Pro 8 cores only got 9,570. As for graphic, using Geekbench OpenCL, we got 34,350 on the 16 inch, while only 31,300 on the 14 inch. Using Blender Benchmark for 3D rendering a car scene, the 16 inch finished it in four minutes, while the 14 inch took five minutes. Now, for video editing, there was no major difference between the two, due to this being handled by the dedicated media engine. So exporting a five minute 4K H.264 project on Final Cut Pro took two minutes and 50 seconds on both machines. However, in my experience, the fans will kick sooner on the 14 inch than the 16 inch because it lacks the better and bigger cooling. Overall, in my experience, there is no noticeable day-to-day -day performance difference between the two base models. Owing to its larger size, the 16 inch MacBook Pro contains a larger battery and has longer lasting battery life. The 14 inch model contains a 70 watt hour battery, while the 16 inch model contains a 100 watt hour battery. Due to the bigger size of its battery, the MacBook Pro 16 inch is able to work for longer without needed a recharge. In my test, I was able to get 15 hours of browsing on the 16 inch while only about 12 hours on the 14 inch. The new MagSafe 3, like I mentioned before, allows the MacBook Pro to go from zero to 50% charge in only 30 minutes. However, it all depends on the power adapter that you use. In the base 14 inch, you will not get this feature unless you get the 96 watt charger from the store or you go for the M1 Max on the 14 inch. All the 16 inch models come with the 140 watt power adapter, which enables fast charging. Price and value. Here's where things get a little tricky. Since you can change the laptop configuration by choosing what chip, amount of memory and storage and other add-ons you want to get for your MacBook Pro, it's very easy to spend thousands of dollars on either the 14 inch or the 16. So for the sake of argument, let's look at the base model of both laptops. If you upgrade the 14 inch model to the same M1 Pro with 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU that the 16 inch model starts with, it increases the price to $2,299. So just about $200 less than the starting price of the 16 inch model. So for those who are leaning towards buying the 16 inch MacBook Pro and need the M1 Pro with a 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU at a minimum, the reduction of the price difference between the two models to just $200 may make it easier to justify getting the larger machine. Plus you get a bigger screen and battery, a high thermal limit, and all of this will give you a bigger headroom to last longer. Having said that, the test showed that there is no big performance boost if you go for the M1 Pro with 10 cores. 
which means that in practice, you don't need to upgrade the configuration of the base model 14 inch. So you will save $500 compared to the 16 inch. Plus you get a compact, easy to carry laptop with top tier performance. So in my personal opinion, the 14 inch is the laptop to go for, just because it's lighter, easy to carry around, and it has all the performance you will ever need. If those are the things you're looking for, then the 14 inch is the best buy. There you have it, a comparison between the 14 inch and the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I hope this helped you form your opinion about which machine you will choose and rest assured that it will last you a long time. I can't wait to talk to you more about the M2 MacBook Pros that are coming soon. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.